What's up guys? If you're like me, when you first started to dive into advanced statistics in baseball, it may have been a little intimidating at first. There are so many different new statistics out there. Which one should I listen to and what are the best ones for evaluating players' performances? In today's video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about one of the most important stats out there, weighted runs created, in all of its different variants. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. So to begin with, what is Runs Created? It was a statistic created by none other than Bill James himself, someone I probably could have brought up sooner considering he created the term sabermetrics. The goal of this statistic was similar to that of the other statistics I've covered on this channel so far. To take your typical production slash line and turn it into one easy to read, all encompassing statistic. There's no better way to read about a player's production than to quantify the number of runs they created based on their production. Since the creation of this statistic, it has evolved in several ways. Stats like weighted runs created and weighted runs created plus or weighted runs above average are all stemming from this original stat. And before we jump into what all of those statistics are and how they're calculated, I wanted to take a second to break down the form of abbreviation used in a lot of these new age statistics. This is the same stat as runs created, but with two different adaptations. The first being your lowercase w, or the weighted part of the stat. Whenever you see this on a statistic, it means that it is taking your stat and putting it on some sort of scale. The goal of this is to make it friendlier to read. You've seen this before on our video on WOBA, where the average WOBA is altered to match the same scale as that season's league average OBP, but you will also hear me talk more about it in today's video for weighted runs created and weighted runs above average. Next is going to be your second adaptation, or the plus at the end of the statistic. Whenever you see the plus at the end of a stat, it means that the stat has been adjusted to match the park and league production values. Hitting 30 home runs at cores may be less impressive than hitting 30 home runs elsewhere, so your stat should understand that. You see this commonly after stats like OPS, and a stat we're going to talk about today, Weighted Runs Created Plus. The goal of the plus, like I said, is to eliminate park and league advantages. Now let's get back into runs created. Alright, so how are these stats calculated? Starting with Weighted Runs Created, it takes a player's WOBA less the league average WOBA, divided by your WOBA scale, a provided constant, and then you add the league average runs per plate appearance multiplied by the player's plate appearances. This statistic isn't that intimidating. It does a phenomenal job taking your WOBA stat a step further. A higher weighted runs created number means that the player is producing well. However, that's where weighted runs created plus comes in to steal the show. This equation is a little more intense. It takes into account your park and league averages, and finally multiplies its output by 100 to move the league average number to 100. Above 100 is good, below, not so much. You may also notice that instead of WOBA, this equation is taking weighted runs above average into account. This is the same output as weighted runs created, but it is scaled so the league average is now instead zero. All in all, the best stat of the group is going to be weighted runs created plus. It's the most in-depth while spitting out an easy to read figure. Above 100 is good, below is bad. To help paint a picture of these three stats, let's take a look at the typical ratings across them, starting with weighted runs created. Your excellent category is going to fall above 105. Great at 90, above average at 75, average at 65, and below average at 60. The higher the number, the better, of course, but these next two stats are a little easier to understand. Weighted runs above average is the same exact thing as weighted runs created, but it's scaled so the league average falls at zero. So as you go up from there, you see improvement among the players. Positive is going to be better, and the further you get from zero, the better the player has done. Of course, with zero being the league average, below average players are going to fall into the negative range. Finally, we get to my favorite version of runs created, weighted runs created plus. Your average for this number falls at 100. And you may notice that as you get into the higher ranges, the jumps between ranges get larger compared to the last two stats. This is because, unlike weighted runs created and weighted runs above average, this equation is calculated completely differently. 
This is the most all-encompassing, easy-to-read statistic of the bunch. It takes a similar approach to weighted runs above average, where the stat is set to an easy-to-read benchmark number, 100, but it also takes into account the league and park factors. So next time you're watching an MLB broadcast or looking into your favorite player, look a little closer because weighted run created plus is a number that's becoming more popular across the industry. So as we end every video, why does this all matter? Well, the goal of this channel is to be yet another resource for you to sharpen your tools and increase your knowledge base when it comes to the data-driven revolution occurring all throughout baseball. Understanding some of the new age statistics, no matter how long they've been around now, helps you have better informed conversations when attempting to evaluate players. This can be done across any level using the calculations provided in today's video. As there are more and more new great stats in the industry, I'm trying to highlight a few of the most beneficial ones, in my opinion, as well as covering how they're calculated and why they may be useful. So if you enjoy these episodes on the game's new stats, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support, and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.